of judging us on who's right and who's wrong and who makes the right choices. So based on that, everyone is probably playing a certain part. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So even those that appear to us as if they are not on, on, the, on the right path may actually be there so that we can be constantly challenged by them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best how he will treat them and how he will finally decide about what to what kind of a reward is waiting for those people. But be that as it may, he said, when he says that not every bird likes to uh, enjoy the fig and uh, not every uh, ear is, is capable of receiving the message of truth, this only means that when we, when we come up with a discussion that may be profound and requires a whole lot of passion in the heart, uh, not everybody in the audience will be willing to receive it. Uh, if you were to listen to uh, Safi's talk that was uh, very kindly uh, forwarded to most of us, uh, Safi around, around the first few minutes when he talks about Al-Quran and he says if somebody picks up the Quran and starts to read it and after Al-Fatiha when he goes to Al-Baqarah and after a couple of uh, Rakus you start uh, you start uh, hearing about Allah's message that if you do this, this punishment is waiting for you to, and that that I have made them blind and I've made them hear, they can, the truth comes to them, but they cannot hear it and all. So he says, by listening to that, many people would just uh, get, you know, kind of uh, uh, disturbed and they put the book away and they never go back to it. Uh, there's a point in that. And that point is that this book is not necessarily opening up to somebody unless uh, they are made to receive it, so to speak. Uh, if, if this was just an ordinary book, not a living book, then anybody picks it up from the shelf would probably benefit from it if he knows the language that it's in. And yet we know that that is not the case. So, Iqbal says, Tere, Tere, Kya hai? Tere, Jab tak naho nuzul e kitab, Gira kusha hai na razi na sahib e kashaf, Tere, Dil pe hi samaj lije na, Jab, unless it really is revealed unto you yourself, Then all kinds of tafasir cannot really help you. It has to, the book has to, the Quran, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be revealed unto you. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to make that intention that and believe that this is a message directed at you. Once you attain that, then it starts to open itself. And when it opens itself, the first uh, few verses also only could really give you the heights in your, uh, in your uh, conviction that Others may not receive even by reading it for 40, 50 years by, by, by just rhetoric recitation and not understanding it. So, so ilm or the knowledge, uh, mashallah, that is uh, the topic that, uh, that uh, transcends uh, throughout uh, uh, Rumi's message along with ishq and uh, intellect. So these three uh, entities are running alongside. And, uh, you know, many, many years ago, um, when I was reading Iqbal only, not Rumi much, uh, I was impressed by the fact that uh, Iqbal also very emphatically emphasized the need of passion or love or muhabba and uh, uh, was not too impressed by worldly knowledge. So I remember writing at the time a good poem, but one of the verses from the poem that I wrote was Mardane Haq Shanas ki Sohbat bhi chahiye Dunia ka har sabak nahi milta kitab se You need company of people that are blessed, that are receiving message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly 
in their hearts. And in that environment, in that ambiance, you benefit from it uh, secondarily. And once you become into the inner circle of those people, then this uh, attraction and this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all the angels that we cannot see that may be surrounding those, those gatherings, that with that, the knowledge comes in. Now, human knowledge, the way we have it, or with the way human has evolved up to now, including all the scientific discoveries and all, is minuscule compared to the actual body of knowledge that is out there in the universe. And we, as humans, should first recognize that our brain, our intellect, our mind, our chips in the computer that we have up here only have so much memory and so much capacity, so much understanding. The frequencies that we understand are very limited. But once you get it out of this sphere, when you annihilate your physical body, in favor of your spiritual body that is within you. And uh, you connect to the source. In other words, you get a lead <laughs> once you purify your spirits. In a, it's like it's having a lead that you take from your little uh, handheld computer and then connect it to the world wide web, so to speak, or universe wide web. Then you have a knowledge that is unlimited. And that knowledge is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And wherever uh, he wants to distribute that knowledge, he gives it. But, but if you, uh, if you uh, ponder now after what I just said to that verse that I mentioned, most of the spiritualists and teachers and masters, when they come to that point, they just stop. It's like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran also says about Miraj, comes to a point where now the discourse is supposed to start. And we are eager to, to hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to our beloved prophet and vice versa. There, the same thing happens. Then he revealed unto his servant whatever he revealed. Similarly here, so I'm going to cut short my discourse. Goodbye. That's how Rumi has really addressed this. So not everything that they, the Rumi or Iqbal or others before him, like Hafiz and, and Arabi, Ibn al-Arabi, these people also, when they came to a certain point, then they did not put that in the book or the book could not really um, was not worthy of, of receiving it. So they have cut short their discourse and not given their personal experiences specifically for this reason, because many people could be misguided by that. If they see that and they say, oh, it cannot happen and they may lose their Iman. So to avoid that and not put the people to that test, uh, these spiritualists usually uh, keep this message to those special people <clears throat> that are around them in their company so that they can remedy anything, any side effect that it might take place because you do not want this particular capability to, to, to resemble shirk or anything that equates to the powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Uh, they have to be careful to, to make sure that whatever capabilities they achieve, and I don't know if any one of you has known anybody that had such, such uh, capabilities. I fortunately do, and I'm not going to give details of that, but I know, uh, uh, I knew somebody, I had met somebody who had that, that ability to be able to see things miles away, wherever, mm -hmm. and uh, be able to have that V in directly and remedy whatever he had to do was watching and what was basically uh, guarding uh, and following the commands of whosoever was leading him or her to remedy, to do God's work. And, and they do not share that information in detail because then a person would think that this is God's work and how can anybody 
a human claim to be doing it. This is heresy. This is uh, uh, shirk. And then they basically uh, start to uh, say negative things about not only them, but about the religion of Islam or spirituality. So spiritualists have been very careful. But we have to know and remember as humans that our capability to receive is limited. And once we know that, and we come up to say, then we are safe, saved from denying anything. If somebody was to tell me, if any one of you tells me that uh, wallahi, this thing happened to me and, uh, and uh, I was just coming and suddenly something told me stop and I stopped and lo and behold, just right in front of me, two things fell from the mountain or from the hill over the road and I was saved. I should not say, no, that cannot happen. Who was there? No, who made that sound to you? I, I cannot believe it. You made it up. I should not say that. This is the lesson that I'm getting from here. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best before you deny such things, uh, you should realize that nothing is beyond the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guardian angels and others um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message gives uh, points to. Those things are real and uh, those are real for those people who are spiritually uh, well uh, you know, developed. Uh, others that may not be there First thing they have to learn it, they should not deny it outright. This is why Al Quran starts by saying, First priority and first prerequisite is really to start before you get any lesson that you have to start believing in things that there are, things that are in a ghab, in alim ghab, that we are not capable of perceiving or seeing right away and that thing exists. Once that, that acceptance takes place, then everything else uh, kind of starts to fall in place and depending on your capability and your status and your stage, uh, then you learn and you, uh, you, then you come to a point where uh, you really become, you know, in some way or form, uh, Khalifatullah. Uh, the servant of Allah in this in this world will do his work. Sometimes you may be doing his work without realizing that that's what has happened to you. You may end up somewhere and do something which looks very trivial to you. And you may just pass by and not even connect it. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you do something that was very, very essential for one of his servants. And if we start to to kind of keep our minds open for that, then we will see that within our lives, if our intentions are good, we will be doing work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, and that way we are in, a, a, in our own little way, helping the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there is a verse in, um, in Quran, jinna wal insa illa li most translators uh, say that we have not created the jinns or humans except that they should worship me. Actually, abd and, and ibadah and all that is more than worship. It's, it's really uh, serving the creation. In Urdu verse, the best description I find is that dar de dil ke vaste paida kiya insaan ko. No, the, they were not there was no shortage of you know angels and jinns to to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship him he created humans so that they have passion for each other compassion for each other and serve Allah's creation when you you know the story that Rumi mentions about a lady or somebody who was really not necessarily doing good deeds all his or her life. I will not go into the detail, but there was a cat that she saw, looked very thirsty, 
and she fed the cat. She took the cat in and gave the milk and gave whatever. And just because of that deed, although that, that entity, if I remember correctly, was not even somebody that took Shahada properly, but she was forgiven for that good deed alone because that was the creation of God that she uh, served. So the, the essence of the method basically is, number one, we should understand our limitations. Number two, do not deny anything when it comes to knowledge, because others may be having that kind of a knowledge that we can't perceive. And unless we have evidence to the contrary, we should not throw that thing out of hand. And number three, not everyone is, is made to receive the highest kind of a form of knowledge that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are given to the, to the extent that we can receive. If you go to the ocean and you have a cup in your hand, you can fill all you want, but you'll bring back only a cup. But if you have a big container with you and then have a, have a hose that can connect to the ocean, then that connects to the, to the water reservoir that you have around your home, then you will constantly have the, the source of uh, water that you need much more than uh, you were intending to get. Iqbal says, tu hi nada. चंद कलियों पर कनात कर गया, वरना गुलशन में इलाजे तंगी ये दामा भी है। Knowledge out there is so vast, you are the only fool one that went to the garden and brought only a few little flowers with you, because that's all you could contain in your pocket or in your lap. If you were to realize uh, there was arrangements for you that you could have taken whatever container you want, take all the flowers and everything else you want from the garden. And then ask the master and he will make sure that you get that, those things home in a bigger container, in a truck or in a train or whatever else is required according to your desire, desire and demand. So when we start to spiritually enlighten ourselves, it's like the flute that uh, Mavlana uh, used. He says that once you empty it out properly and it makes beautiful sound, then the one uh, side from the hole is what you are really making the noise. The hole that which uh, from where the sound comes out, that's you. But the other side then connects to the master who is blowing into it. So this way you connect it to the divine when you are totally empty of yourself and connected to him. So it's uh, it, the theme is basically the same, but knowledge, 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 Again, the first basic thing about this knowledge is to know that you know nothing and then start from there and whatever else then comes your way, try to try to accumulate it and be thankful for whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. But uh, if you are a spiritual master, then realize that when you're talking about that knowledge, not everybody is capable or worthy of receiving it. I think I should stop here so that we have a chance to discuss. Yeah, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Uh, brother, brother Mehdi is on as well. So, so. Oh, mashallah, good. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, everybody. So <laughs> sorry. I set, I set my alarm clock for 6.50 instead of 5.50. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <guys. laughs> Alhamdulillah, you're okay. We were concerned that yeah, you know. you're okay. Yeah, thank God. Mashallah. Mashallah. That was really great. <laughs> Mashallah. Mm. Mashallah. Beautiful. I think, uh, Dr. Sam, I have two uh, things. I think it was beautiful. I think you were. Yeah, and the question I have is I think is the people who are loud means that you have the inner quest, I said, of Allah. So, yes, you know that's that's the, the question is that yes, and, and who are those people who are allowed? What are what is that? You no know, one is the tawfiq of Allah. He chooses whom he wants to give, and, and the people who have this continuous inner quest of reaching to Him. Exactly, and exactly. Inner 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 purity of intention actually. to make a niya and be be khulus with khulus with sincerity. Mm -hmm. Then then He takes over, mashallah. After that, with the sincerity. Uh, then, then the things start to come in, and at a, when when these people, the saliks, the people that are on the path of uh, truth, when they start on that path with sincerity, 
then uh, for them, uh, re prerequisite is to, to start losing the hirs or havas of this world. So they have to, uh, to start uh, pulling away from for longings for the worldly things. And they have to start attracting themselves to the longings of the, the other world. So um, you cannot serve two masters is not necessarily a Christian thought. It's basically a spiritualist thought whereby in your heart, you have to have one and only one. That is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once you bring that in, then you start loving his creation also for him, so to speak. So that is his love that is speaking uh, through that thing. This is, this is one of the messages that you see in that uh, uh, Safi, Brother Safi's uh, recording with Mujadadi, that uh, you may think that this is trivial and you are uh, doing some work for your neighbor or a person that you met on the street, but you are actually doing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's work. And that's exactly the, the, the meaning of, of uh, being friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The other thing you mentioned about the the forces of the you know the forces of the good and evil. Yes. And I think when something is, how would you appreciate the good when you don't know the evil? So exactly. that has to be you know you have to know yes yes this is something bad but how would we know without that? So the the, the fact that that is also there is a it's a blessing of Allah to appreciate His you know. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> so, Brother Jawamar, do you have anything uh, that you want to add on that particular? Well, so, 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 thank you. Jazakallah khair. Very beautiful. So, actually, it maybe it was a blessing uh, in disguise that um, that <laughs> that I that I arrived late. Uh, that that you got to. Um, uh, you are being very kind. You are being very kind. Thank you so much. You know, I, I don't know if all of us have had the chance to listen to the two hours of Brother Safi's uh, discourse with uh, Mujaddadi, but it's worth listening after, you know, a few weeks again. One of the things that I picked up that I did not comprehend before uh, was that we always talk about, about killing the nafs that we have that they, from Brother Tyre's uh, comment, it reminded me that we should kill the nafs so that we can purify our soul. And he made a point that it's totally impossible to kill the nafs. That's, you know, Safi made that point. Mm -hmm. That you, it's not there to be destroyed. It's there to be subjugated and Islamized. Like uh, our beloved prophet said that, yes, I do have uh, that shaitan in me also, but I have made him into a believer. So he drew from that, that th this is the design that nafs will always be there, even if you know, when uh, Ibrahim al -Islam was <laughs> taking his son to, to follow our commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the, this nafs in the form of shaitan showed two, three times along the path. Even finally, uh, I have seen examples where somebody was tested by shaitan and they, th they shoot him away. And then he comes back and congratulates that you have now reached uh, the paradise and you have really passed all the tests, just giving him the feeling that you are somebody and you did it out of your goodness. And even that thought at the last moment that now I am worthy of paradise, even that thought uh, could be coming from nafs. And if you start believing that, that now you have achieved anything, just like a brother, I personally know who came after Hajj and he was not necessarily a well-educated, well-versed in Islam brother, but he went because of his wife. She wanted uh, him to come because she wanted to do the Hajj. So he went and he comes back. And when we were visiting, visiting with him and in honor of the, the Hujjaj that we gave a party, few others were there with him. He firmly believed that he doesn't have to pray anymore because he did so many prayers and he heard that one prayer in Makkah does this much blessings and one in Medina does this much blessing. So he has enough for the lifetime. He doesn't have to do it. <laughs> and unfortunately, he was convinced about that. So this is the kind of thing that should never occur. So nafs is always there, will continue to challenge us. We don't have to think of killing it, but we have to take it 
and suppress it and keep it under our influence and then keep hoping for the best with mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so Dr. Abdul Rahman, actually, this, is, this discussion today is very timely because the, the next part of Lubi Lubab that, that we were going to read this week, um, but unfortunately, but I guess we can read it next time, is it's actually, ju- it's related to this. How can we, you know, keep this sensation, this, this feeling, um, you know, uh, in, in the, the modern times that we live in? Because, you know, you may, for example, have a very spiritual moment, uh, but you can't seclude yourself from everybody forever, right? And then when you, when you go back down and you interact people and mix with people in the world, it's you're kind of like water that comes to the ground, right? The water is pure, but when it comes to the ground, the water, um, it becomes impure again. Um, and and it, it, it's, it's a really interesting discussion about um, how you just have to keep going through this process of purifying and repurifying yourself uh, after interacting, you know, with people in your daily lives. Maybe you get into an argument with your you know, this is a colleague at work or, you know, your, your, your teenage, <laughs> your teenage kid, for example, will will make you what, what's called, um, you know, or you become najis again. <laughs> like water um and and it goes through the cycle so so i think uh, you, you're this this was very timely inshallah next time well, well this is the excellent point and i think we can probably discuss for two hours on this one on any particular day this is the very first step of the salik brother what you mentioned you know saliks the people who travel the path who intend to travel the path this is the very first step for them so this is the basics so what you have to learn is just be patient and be accepting. Even very, very uh, kind of uh, obnoxious kind of comments, even there you have to smile and you win those people with love. You know, on this particular topic, this beautiful uh, story he recounted, Brother Safi, and we all know this. When Adrat, uh, Ali Shere Khuda, Mawla Ali, when he overtook uh, that Pahlawan, that uh, that very strong man in his one-to-one battle. And when he actually subdued him and he was on the floor and Zulfiqar was just uh, in um, Malali's hand and he uh, could have uh, chopped his head off, uh, the, the, the victim spit on his face and uh, Malali just got up from his chest and spared his life. And he was surprised as to why you spared me. Now, here is your point. Right after that, it was that action was so impressed, impressive to, to that, that non-believer that not only he became a believer, but he became a defender of Islam. Now, later on, when in a discourse, and this is the kind of stuff that you know, Rumi tells you slowly in, in, in session, sometimes in you know, third volume or fourth volume, and that was that that uh, Maul Ali says that when I looked at your eyes, when you were helpless, I saw something in there that really surprised me. And that is that I saw a whole lot of mercy and a whole lot of goodness in your eyes that was supposed to come. Now here is the knowledge that me and you cannot comprehend, but those that are spiritually inclined and uh, Maul Ali was in, in our you know, you know, from what we know, it was a murder comment. He was at that age also with the blessings and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being in the company of and the and the bloodline of our beloved prophet, he was murder comment at that stage. He could see that this this person is is going to be of value to Islam. And this is the message that he got through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine intervention, so to speak. So here, that was an extreme example. But for us also, these little challenges that our children gave, our people, our neighbors do, this is where you shine when you when you smile and you accept it and you say, yeah, about all these things, you bad things about you said about me. Brother, I know I have all those flaws, but Allah knows best. I'm trying to improve myself. I'm trying to purify myself. And if I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. So certainly... The, hopefully the tempers cool down and then then people listen to your message. 
so maybe you know it's a, it's a, it's a it's an excellent uh, kind of a um, lesson to learn but uh, uh, reading it from the book itself is not enough this is this is why i think one really has to number one mature also with age and number two uh, be in the company of righteous people who sometimes by one their one of their looks uh, can really guide you to to where you need to be sure. i think so we'll, i have a question yes yes ajay bhai uh, so i i i have heard this uh, obviously this uh, incident about hazrat ali mm-hmm. uh, but i have heard a different version so maybe i i don't know i never that, read it what did but you my my version growing up i re- i heard was that hazrat ali when when the when the uh, pehlwan spat in his face he said i was i was going to kill him but at that time i was killing him for islam but when he spat in my face anger came over me and shaitan came in, inside me and i was going to kill him with rage and that's when i realized that i don't want to kill him with rage or anger that would not be fair that would not be just so i spared his life at that moment because at that time i myself became uh, you know filled with uh, anger and rage and shaitan and that's why at that moment i didn't want I, to kill I, him for myself yeah for revenge yeah no no that is correct yeah. that is correct but that is the simplest version yes i yes. gave i gave the advanced version because although he okay. gave that he gave that explanation and that is the explanation that you hear for the first time and we in okay. literature have, have have taken that but the spiritual okay. aspect of that is this the was knowledge hikma of allah subhanahu wa taala later on if you rumi will tell you but actually he says he saw something in his eyes and then then this thought came to him mm. if i kill him now it will be a revenge me versus yeah. him and that is not my intent i was doing god's work but rumi translates it into this to give us that lesson that he saw in his eyes that he will be a positive influence for islam and that was the reason that the the hidden hikma behind sparing his life was that he could be a value yes of course yes, but but what you. you said is true that is 90% okay. is, is is the explanation we move on by listening to that and that gives one lesson that do, you do any any and everything that you do do for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala if it is for your own glory or for your own um, you know victory then you have lost the purpose yeah excellent you have a beautiful point i'm glad that you cleared it because i i went over it thinking that everybody knows that aspect of it but the 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 hikma behind it allah subhanahu wa taala knows best so you really have to the encounters that you have that may make you feel angry and may make you lose temper that is your nafs at that time kind of taking you away so just calm down calm down that nafs and do uh, things in a very humble way and uh, you will find opportunity then to ac- express your point of view when the other person is now in a receptive mode and doesn't see that you are combative but you are there basically to 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 listen and uh, to to take things lightly and without any any qualm or hurtful uh, uh, deed for anybody right thank you yeah but i think you bring a point which is i think interesting is uh, similarly there are many other examples where we just see and read uh, and there are much deeper meaning to the same and same, same thing context. but i think you're right that there are people at different levels so a general public yes this is because they can relate to something and then there's a deeper meaning so these are the different veils as we as we know that those who have this quest and this journey at different veils are more for them to see they beyond and i think this is interesting to see and i can see many other examples when we hear these hadith and all and we see what is it been said literally and the, the meaning of it and i think the more i i just have this quest of learning from masnavi is that really he he takes you deep down it's like more of a scuba diver so you see what is on the surface and as you go deeper and deeper depending on your capacity you get to see more and more and more and there is no there is no bottom of it exactly you see like the example of al quran mashallah uh, people can read and 
and uh, be memorizers of it and and mufassir of it and never it, it comes in the, a point in their life when they feel that they know it or they have really understood mm -hmm. all of it it mm -hmm. keeps opening more and more depending on your capacity to receive it now that is the ex of course the extreme example but even in ordinary poetry uh, and the poetry of the spiritualist and stuff if you take iqbal's verses or rumi's verses and you may think everybody thinks they know it tan le jao jahan de tan masdur ni le kasra di de jahan dastur ni everybody thinks why well, it's very easy tan le jao the body from the soul and soul from body is not hidden le kasra di de jahan dastur ni but this is not the common common pat knowledge that everybody can see the soul you think you understand it but actually you may not sorry the sun is coming on my face and you can oh yeah here you go so you think that you understand it but the level of understanding as what tan is and what ja is and what the what the story is talking about is a, is amazing and as you as you ponder over it you realize that it really has has different uh, levels of understanding and more and more you you think about these things more you realize that a whole lot of knowledge is hidden uh, from common uh, people and and only those that make a true intention uh, you know there is a story about iqbal when he was little and was reading quran and his father passed by and he says uh, i'm going to have to tell you something beta but i'm right now in a rush I'll, i have a special message for you then he did that deliberately maybe 2 3 days later again he saw you know 8 9 years old ikbal reading reciting quran and uh, then the father passed by and I'm, ikbal asked him dad you wanted to tell me something the other day what is it he said well I, i'll tell you if i'll tell you i did not let me do what i'm doing so he kept him in suspense for some time then then one day he decided to tell him and he says beta when you are reciting quran imagine that allah subhanahu wa taala is revealing this book to you directly to you once you get that kind of an understanding that kind of a, a, a approach to it it will start descending into your heart and once it comes to your heart then you will see the meanings of it that are much different than you might read in any tafsir Mm -hmm. so this this is an interesting uh, observation to read from those spiritualists although his, iqbal's father was a, a darwesh and yet he was not a religious scholar but they understood basically that the profound message in al quran and then by by inference into other spiritual uh, you know writings is basically such that it opens slowly gradually there are levels of understanding and everybody a person who understands 1% or 5% comes out as if he is fully satisfied with the meaning <laughs> versus the one that understands 95% also who also feels that now he really understands it so that is the the beauty of uh, you know the knowledge itself the knowledge has its it's layers and layers and layers yes uh, i think we should make dua inshallah and, uh, please then the next week somebody go ahead not necessarily me who brother saber maybe you can start inshallah or raza raza if you there please i don't see up السلام عليكم سيدي الله على سيدنا محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد يا الله Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we call upon you by your 99 names of, of beauty, majesty, and might. Ya Allah, we, we ask of you from the name of Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim to have mercy upon us. 
Ya Latif, we ask of you from your name of subtlety to be gentle with us. Ya Razak, from your name of providence, from your name of sustenance, Ya Allah, we ask that you give sustenance to us. Ya Allah, we, we kindly and humbly ask that you look upon this gathering which we have gathered in the early morning. Ya Allah, we ask that you make this gathering for your sake and your sake only. Amen. Ya Allah, if there were any intentions which were clouding our intentions, Ya Allah, we ask that you purify our intentions. Ya Allah, Amen. we ask that this gathering be solely for the forgiveness of ourselves, for the purification of our souls, Ya Allah, and for the betterment of our dunya and akhira. Ya Amen. Allah, we ask that all of those who are present and all of those who are absent are blessed by the teachings of Maulana Rumi and Maulana Kashifi, Ya Allah, that you, that you allow our hearts to be penetrated with these meanings and that we are able to embody these meanings inside and out. Ya Allah, we ask that you bless all of our elders and all of our teachers and all of our uh, all of those who have passed away ya Allah with the benefit of this of this gathering uh, ya Allah we ask that you bless and sanctify the spirit of these masters and that you bless and sanctify the spirit of our anbiya and especially of our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam سبحان ربك رب العزة يوم يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين ما شاء الله ما شاء الله الحمد لله سبحان فريفري ما شاء الله سي يو نيكست ويك برادر بيني إن شاء الله سكس ثري إن شاء الله إن شاء الله أوكي أوكي السلام عليكم عليكم السلام Alaikum salam. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam.